So now that I've given you an overview of the Java Streams model and we've talked through some of the common operations, let's spend a little time visualizing Java Streams in action. And I'm going to pick a particular example here to help clarify how everything works. And basically why this is useful is that, or why streams are useful is they help us to be able to compose our programs out of modular elements, these aggregate operations that are linkable or pullable together, assemblable together into pipelines. So it makes it real easy to plug and play the results. And again, the, the water filter example is a good illustration of this for being able to filter and transpose or transform the elements in the stream. So the example we're gonna look at here is, is what we've been talking about before, the, the example of the Hamlet characters and we're gonna filter them and so on. And rather than looking just at the source code, I'm also going to visualize how things work, or at least logically how things work under the hood. And hopefully this will help make it a bit more intuitive and kind of right brain focused so you can see the big picture, both the, the left brain focused part, which is the part having to do with the code, and the right brain focused part, which is the visualization. And we put those two things together and hopefully the, the light bulbs will go off and it'll be even more clear what's happening. So what we have here is we start out with a, a list of names or an array of names. And those names are then transformed by the of factory method. And we end up with a stream of names. So whereas before we had an array of Horatio, Laertes, and Hamlet, we now have a stream of Horatio, Laertes, Hamlet, and other Hamlet character names. The next thing that happens is that gets connected with the filter method or the filter intermediate operation or aggregate operation. And what happens after we do the filtering is we end up with a stream of names that start with an uppercase or lowercase h. So as you can see visually, what's happened here is that Laertes and Claudius and uh, Gertrude and Ophelia and Rosencrantz and Gilderstern and so on, they've all disappeared. Rosencrantz and Gilderstern, Gildenstern disappear for other reasons, but, but basically we've got rid of them and now we have Horatio and Hamlet. And the next thing we do is we connect those and map them through the capitalized method reference. And what we end up there is a stream of capitalized names where we still haven't done anything with the ordering. We just have them capitalized in a consistent way. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you here, not the last thing in the stream, but the last thing I'm gonna show you here visually is that we go ahead and we sort the results by the sorted method. And what comes out of that, of course, will be a stream that's sorted in lexicographic order. So Hamlet now comes before Horatio. Everybody else has been dropped. We've canonicalized the capitalization model and we've put them in a natural sorted order. So hopefully this will help you kind of see literally how things are happening with streams. There's a lot more to the way this works and I've explained here, but this just gives you a good starting point to kind of see what's going on, literally. When we talk about other examples later in the course, I will once again use this kind of a model to help visualize the processing steps. So that's the end of our simple visualization of Java streams in action. Hopefully that gives you a bigger, more holistic gestalt of how streams work.